Hello, it's Brittany Chavers and I'm back with Jesse Jane Speeds today and we're going to be using the uh, light and dark academia mixes today um, to make some jewelry. I'm actually going to be making a, a knotted leather necklace. So much fun. I'm going to go through um, while we're waiting for more people to join. Um, we're going to be relying heavily on the dark today, but I will be using some elements from the light. I'm also going to be using um, some Earl Grey Mini Mix. Hi, Sarah. Um, we're going to be using some Leather Cord USA. Um, I think it's 0.5 millimeter in um, Horizon. Hi, Monica. Hi, Maureen. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. And if we have time, I actually have um, a a second project planned, but we'll see if we get there. Hi, Melody. And um, we're going to use some chain as well in a clasp. So we've got a lot going on today. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things that we're going to be using in the Academia Mix the Dark. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, we're going to be using this beautiful uh, locket today. And it's it's got a cute little latch on the side. And it opens up and you can put your trinkets in there. You can put your um, essential oils in there. I think it's really cool. Very pretty. Very sparkly. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. We're using the Dark Academia Mixes today. And we're going to be making a, a knotted leather necklace using some um, Leather Cord USA. So I'm super excited. So what I'm going to do first is grab the pendant. I'm going to move everything off to the side after I grab the pendant out of the dark academia mix. But there is one in, there is another um, locket in the light if you are in, if you want to use a um, antique brass. Here it is. We've got a really cool, almost steampunk, looks kind of like a steampunk ladybug. So if you wanted to use that, you absolutely could. I think it opens, but I actually haven't tried that before, so it might not open. I'm not 100% sure. It's got a, yeah, it's got a hinge, so it does open. Okay, I'm going to move those off to the side. I'm going to grab my two meters. We're going to need all two meters of the leather today. Again, this is half millimeter leather. And I'm going to join the ends together. And I'm just going to cut it in half. So we'll have two pieces instead of one, um, each a meter long. Hi, Sherry. All right, so I'm going to cut this in half. I'm just going to use my scissors. You can use um, your nippers if you'd like. Hi, Sandy. Welcome. And then I'm going to grab my locket. And you can either keep this bail on or you can go right through this one right here, but I'm going to keep the bail on. I'm going to go right through the locket. And I'm going to move my locket to the middle of the necklace. And I'm going to ensure that it's the middle of the necklace by joining up all four ends. Hi everybody, thanks for joining. And then I'm gonna lock that in place by creating a knot right here. Sticking all four pieces right back through that loop. And then we're gonna move that uh, knot all the way down just so we have a little bit of a loop hanging below to extend our, our locket. Okay, so at this point you'd want to find a bead in our mix that you could string all four of these strands through. And I'm going to choose this one right here. I think it's really cool. It's a nice gunmetal um, filigree bead. And I'm going to take all four strands. I'm going to feed those right through my large hole bead. It may take a moment for all of them to kind of poke out the other side. We do. It's just be a little patient. And then I am going to separate two strands from each other. So we'll have two on the right side and two on the left side. 
and I am going to make a knot. I recently, um, in my, my own bead group, asked everybody maybe what kind of um, component they'd like to try or what technique they'd like to try that they haven't um, tried yet. And one was uh, leather knotting, which I am very big fan of. And so I hope um, this will be helpful for anybody who's trying to learn beginner leather knotting. Hi, Jessica. I'd love to hear some things that you guys would like to try if you'd like to put them in the chat. All right, and I'm just gonna walk this one down and tighten. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is choose some beads to go up each side of the necklace. And I'm just gonna kind of grab some out of here. We've got our Academia Mix. We've got our, well, we've got our light and our dark Academia Mix. And then I also have the matching or coordinating Earl Grey. Um, Cynthia, I'm using 0.5 millimeter leather. Hi, Joan. And um, what you're gonna do is just grab a bead I'm going to take this purple crystal and I'm going to slide it all the way down. And then I'm just going to slide it down one piece. Now, if you have a, a bead that has a larger hole, you can put it on both um, pieces of the leather, but this is, uh, both pieces aren't going to fit through here. Um, Joan, it's 0.5 millimeter. Yeah, good luck, Julie. Julie said she'd like to not like to try not buying beads for a week. <laughs> good luck. Um, I've actually been on a bead diet since February third and haven't bought any, bought any beads, and it's shocking. <laughs> um, okay, so then what you'll do is walk that knot down to that bead, and now it's locked in place. Okay, and then we're just going to do that up the necklace. Now I I pulled this one out so I could show you how to start it by putting the locket on, but I've already done half of a, a necklace here and I'm going to do that same pattern up the necklace so you can watch me doing it. I'm gonna move these out of the way because I have some, oh, actually, you know what I wanted to show you? One other thing before I bring on the other one. I am going to make that focal a little bit more exciting even though it's already really gorgeous having all these crystals on it these came out of the earl gray mix we've got a tassel and we've got a crystal and i'm just going to throw each one of those onto a jump ring and then attach them to our um, pendant so we have a little bit more movement So just put that on the jump ring. And you have several options where you'd like to put the uh, jump ring. You could put it right here on the leather, you could put it right here on this bale, and that's where mine is going. And I'm just gonna repeat that process with my tassel. just like that and then we you have some movement something to play with not only does this open up but now you've got something I'm a fidgeter so when I have jewelry that I can interact with I'm a happy girl <laughs> so I um, started this necklace w going up and so I'm just going to show you how I did this side at, while I do it on the other side so I grabbed one of these really pretty crystal ball beads from the Earl Grey mix mini mix Gonna feed that on. And then we're just going to keep knotting. So you feed one bead on one of the strings and then knot in between. Now, if you'd like to do one bead 
on one string or one tail and then one bead on the next and then not, you can absolutely do that. You can um, not between, or put several beads on and then not, you know, leave three and then not or something like that. Whatever floats your boat. It's your, it's your necklace. You can customize it any way you'd like. Hi, mom. <laughs> I love it when my mom comes to watch. Um, okay, so I'm just going to keep going. I love this crystal. This is from the Dark Academia mix. So then I just move that down, come up behind it, and do another knot. And then once we've knotted up the side of the necklace, I'll show you how we're going to attach it to some chain to finish it off. There we go. Next, I'm getting a larger hole bead like this one. So I'm going to actually put both pieces right through that bead. Slide that down and then make a knot. If you have any questions about leather knotting, uh, you can put those in the chat. I hopefully be able to see them. Oh, and then here I started to make my knot a little bit too far from the bead. So I'm just going to open that up a little bit and slide it down with my fingers. There we go. And you can tighten individually. Next, I'm going to grab a crystal from the Earl Grey mix. Slide that down and then knot. Thanks, Joanne. Aren't these colors wonderful? That dark purple and the black and the lighter purple together. And then here, I'm going to tug a little bit harder because I, my knot wasn't complete. And then next, I'm gonna grab this beautiful large bead from the Academia, Dark Academia mix. I love this one. And I'm gonna slide both pieces through this one because it's got a large hole. Okay, next we've, this one came from the Light Academia Mix. It's a nice smoky quartz looking piece of glass. Next, I'm going to grab a piece of lava. This is in both mixes. And it doesn't seem to matter which which tail you go with. Um, it seems to work out perfectly fine if you switch back and forth or if you use the same one over and over to put the bead on. slide that down just a few left we're coming back with another one of these beautiful I love these antique brass crystal balls I actually can't tell if it's antique brass or gunmetal but they're so pretty this is from the Earl Grey mix Yeah, Jessica, this, this is a really nice, like, um, muted lavender color. It's called, I think it's called Horizon. Okay, and then we've got this really funky crystal from the Light Academia mix. So pretty. Look at all the flash in there.
I'm making sure to capture that so that the um, leather is towards the back so we can see all that flash. Yeah, it is really pretty. How's everybody's weather doing? Today we had really pretty weather in Phoenix and then all of a sudden it's super cloudy. Is anybody having storms? I heard there were some, some more storms headed towards the east. All right, and then this bead came from the Earl Grey mix. It's um, a nice coin that has half gold, half clear. I love that. We'll move that down. Oh, Joan, it's knowing where you are. Where are you? And then I have three of these cute little half um, color uh, crystal rondelles from the Earl Grey mix. And what I'm gonna do is put one on one strand. Ooh, it's 71 in Tampa. Very nice, Teresa. And then one on the other. And then one more on the first strand. So they're kind of um, layered, like kind of like shuffled like a deck of cards almost. But I'm gonna make sure that I make enough room for all three of them to be like that. Ooh, Alberta, Canada, okay. And it's 40 degrees in Rochester, uh, Minnesota. Very nice. Okay, so those will lay kind of like um, a deck of cards if you shuffle them. And then we're just gonna do one more knot here. Oh my goodness. Colorado's supposed to have negative two to negative seven. Oh my gosh, I don't know how you do it. All right, so if you see what I did there, I made a little mistake and it only came out through one of these loops. So I wanna make sure that I take the time to stick those back through the loops and make a full knot. All right, so I've got my necklace, the knotted portion complete. Okay, doesn't that look like, isn't that just fun? It's so sparkly and a kind of eclectic because of the leather. So what I'm gonna do is take this really fun, um, I don't even, I don't remember the name of it, but it's got two um, rings for every section of the chain and it's a gunmetal chain too. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure around my neck really quick. <laughs> I should have done this before the video, but to make sure that I have it the length that I'd want it to be. And I'm just gonna make a little cut here to make sure that the chain is the length I'd like it to be. Throw that to the side and use that on a different project. And then I'm gonna take my two pieces right here and I'm just gonna put them on the chain like that was another bead, okay? Um, so it's not some um, big mystery. Actually, I'm gonna come at it from the same side that we were before, so it's just like another bead. It's not, um, you can do a barrel knot here. However, my tails are very short for that. So I'm just gonna do the same knot we've been doing the entire necklace. And then you'll wanna have your preferred glue on hand so you can glue the knot and then trim those pieces. So there we go. And I actually am gonna pull with my pliers to get that tight, okay? I'm gonna take my, I use GS Hypo Cement. You can use E6000, you can use, um, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, Super Glue Gel. You can use um, Super New Glue. There are so many glues that work with leather. I'm just gonna use this. This is what I use a lot. I'm just gonna put it where the ends would be if I cut the um, leather. And then I'm just gonna work it a little bit into that knot so it doesn't come out. 
and so, uh, most of the glue is dry clear so you don't have to worry about seeing it. Now with GS Hypo Cement you want to put the pin back in so you don't have an issue later. So I'm going to come across to the other side. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did. Line up my two pieces of chain or my two links. Come through. Do another knot. And it gets a little tricky the shorter the, <laughs> the shorter the leather gets, but if you take your time, you'll have a really nice necklace. All right, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Grab it, pull, making sure that my knot's secure. And if we see, we had about the same amount of length right there. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Oh, here we go. Glue my knot in a few different places. If you don't like glue on your necklace, um, that's okay. Just make sure that you're really secure with that knot. You don't have to have glue. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a few moments before I cut it. So here's what we're looking at so far. And I think this is long enough to be an over the head necklace, but I'm gonna do, sorry, that's a little caught up. You can't really see what's going on, but I am gonna put on a, um, a clasp. I just wanted to kind of show you where we're at so far. So we have our beautiful little pendant uh, locket and then we're going up and there we are. So I'm going to just, instead of measuring to figure out where, um, where I need my uh, clasp to go, I'm just going to hold the necklace upside down. So I'm going to put my two knots together and then kind of move my chain down, find the middle. And we're looking at this guy being the middle. So I'm just gonna snip that out of there. If you wanna keep it, um, it might. it's gonna be kind of hard to keep that because I think these are soldered shut. So you have to kind of just sacrifice one of your links. Okay. Take those apart. And then I have a couple different <clears throat> clasps. I think I'm gonna go with this guy today. He's a big um, lobster clasp. These are also available from Jesse James Beads. And then I have two jump rings. So I did bring out a, um, a uh, toggle clasp in case I wanted to go that way, but I like, I like the look of this big guy. So what I'm gonna do is just open up my two heavier duty jump rings and the first one I'll put through the clasp and then the chain, and then the other one I'll just put on the chain itself. The reason why I'm actually using a jump ring to close <clears throat> one side of the necklace is because there are two links. Now, if there's only one link, I would just use that to hook my clasp onto to close the necklace. So we'll put our jump ring on open up our other jump ring, bring our two together, and there we go. Fun knotted leather statement necklace, and then now, <clears throat> excuse me, the glue should be dry enough for me to snip in there. One, two, three, and four. So over time, these this may stretch out, or if you want it to be a little bit longer, you can just pull and that leather will stretch out for you. So maybe you got a knot, a knot too tight or you just want it to be a little bit longer, you can just stretch that by hand. So there is our hand knotted leather necklace. And we did that in 26 minutes. So I actually have a second project that we can use um, up some of those leftover academia um, beads if you'd like to see it. So um, this is really pretty. 
And hopefully if you're, if you're catching the replay later on, uh, this will be available on my um, YouTube channel, um, Turquoise Street. So I had some leftover, this is one of the mixes, but these are the leftover beads from the mix that I used for that necklace. I'm just gonna pour those out. And I also have some of this teeny tiny ball chain that's offered on jessiejamesbeads.com. And I haven't used this in my designs before, and it's really super cute. And I have a few ideas for it, but today I wanted to just do a really cute necklace that would be able to be paired with this. We're just gonna, I mean, it's gonna be a five minute necklace if you need something to throw on as you're walking out the door. So this chain is, like I said, it's itty bitty. I think that's what it's called on the website. And it comes with six of these little tiny, I'm gonna call them crimps. They're really teeny tiny. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that's what's, what closes the end of the, the chain once you've gotten your beads on it or <clears throat> your pendant or your charm or whatever you'd like to put on your necklace. Um, today I'm just going to string several beads on here and then put a clasp on it and Bob's your uncle. You have a necklace that you can, um, pair with your leather necklace. That'll be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to look through these. I'm really loving this really large crystal. So what I want to do is I'm going to put that, that's going to be my focal today. I'm going to grab these two um, bead caps. So either side. I know I want to get these little, these purple crystals in there because they're so fun. Now, I'm not sure. I'm, it's, we might have an issue getting the chain to go through these quatrefoil beads because it's a hollow bead in the middle, but we're going to we're going to try. <laughs> and let's see what else. Is there anything I wanted from this mix? Oh, I like these little, I'm not sure if the chain will fit through these holes, but we'll see. I like these too. And too. So we'll see what works and then we'll go from there. I've already put on one of the clamps just to test it out and then I'll show you how to do it once we've decided how long this necklace will be and uh, gotten our beads on. So let's see. And put those as spacers. Let's see if it'll fit through this chain. If not, it's okay. We can just use the bigger bead. Yay, it works. Okay. Like I said, this one's going to be a real fast five minute necklace where you can just kind of get it together and run out the door. Okay. Um, this is called Itsy Bitsy Chain and it, I don't know the size. It's really tiny. There are two sizes in silver in the store, um, but I think if you looked at it, it's either Itsy Bitsy or Itty Bitty Chain. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, put um, my beads through. just like you were using bead stringing wire. Now, this is the one that I wanna be super careful with. I'm just gonna hold this like that and have it go down the middle. Oh, and there we go, we did it. That is fun. Now, if you have um, mobility issues or it's just too tiny for you to see, uh, bead stringing wire, um, it, uh, 
some like wax linen would also work for you. Something that you could possibly put a needle on. You're welcome. We're halfway there. And this is what it's looking like so far. It's just a cute little stack of beads on a silver chain. Love it. might have too small of a hole. Sometimes beads aren't drilled the exact same, but that one actually ended up working. One more after this one. All right, so now here, I'm gonna decide how long I want this, and I actually want it to be substantially shorter than the other one, because I wanna use it as a layering necklace. So probably anywhere from 16 to 20 inches, depending on um, how, how tight you'd like the necklace to be, or where you'd like it to lay. I'm just making sure that I did it symmetrically. <laughs> So there we go, isn't that cute? Um, and then I am just going to take it off screen for just a moment to measure on myself because I don't have a ruler. There we go. And you know what I did? I did it from the wrong end, so one more second. So we've already put on the clasp, or not the clasp, the stopper on the other side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just trim our chain. Thank you, Cynthia. And then I'm gonna take one of our little tiny doodads. I know that's the technical term. And there is a little bit of a learning curve because these are just so tiny. Um, I, I worked out today that holding one with my um, crimping pliers was the easiest way for me. Now, if that if you want to use your fingers, um, that's fine. I have these huge basketball hands, so <laughs> using my fingers doesn't really work. Um, you can use probably tweezers too, um, or just your regular pliers. I am going to put in, put that right in there. So there's a little bit of a groove in the crimp doodaddy. And I'm just gonna lay that in there and close it. There we go. Now you will need teeny tiny jump rings for this because this these holes are very small. Yeah, Lisa, it really is so quick and such a fun project. So you're gonna need smaller jump rings. Now if you don't have small jump rings, you can create them with wire and I've shown that in a video previously. Just gonna open this up. find my little hole there. Like I said, it's so teeny tiny and I actually don't have a class. Oh, I do. I need a class here. Sorry, just one moment. on there. Close that up. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. What I'll do on the other side though is also include a larger jump ring. So I'm going to put a small jump ring 
on to get a thicker jump ring on as the closure ring. And I hope that makes sense. Sorry, I moved my camera. And so we'll grab another one. These um, little clamshells, Cynthia, actually come with the chain. You get six, I think, with that chain. The jump rings, I think these are uh, four millimeter, the tiny ones. I'll just find my other end. There we go. Slide on my second jump ring, which is probably a six, six millimeter jump ring. And then we have a second necklace. So there we go. Isn't that cute? Super simple. That's something you could probably wear every day and then just change up the coordinating necklaces you wear with it. But I think I think we made a fantastic set using the light and dark Academia mixes, um, some chain leather and um, a mini mix. So I had a ton of fun. We did that in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can check me out on YouTube at uh, turquoise.street. And I also have a group here on Facebook called Brittany Speeds. Thanks to Jesse James Speeds. I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.